Hello, my name is David Mahler and I'm an artist, scholar, professor, originally from Baltimore, Maryland, currently living in Rockville. I'm an associate professor of art at Shepherd University in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Um, at Shepherd, I coordinate the art education program as well as work in teaching some of our design foundations courses in printmaking. Um, I also work at the Delaplane. I've been working there for the last three years or so where I've instructed various uh, youth summer art camps and weekend workshops for adults, including experimental drawing, uh, mixed media <clears throat> processes, and visual journals. This is the first in a series that I'm excited about, first in a series of instructional videos that will discuss and demonstrate some basic techniques for beginning and maintaining a visual journal practice, visual journals being a, a primary focus of my studio practice and my research. So today, what I wanna do is I wanna focus on uh, just some basic uh, paint washes, some textured applications of paint, uh, color mixing, color blending using uh, standard watercolor paint. I have some watercolor paint. I have just a glass of water and then I have uh, a paintbrush with a fairly uh, liberal bristle on the end. Um, I like these paints. Any watercolor paints will do just fine for what we're going to do today. I'm a particular fan of, of, this, of these smaller size ones that are very portable. Also, I like the fact that it has ample room for some color mixing in the tray. So to get started, what we're going to do first is just talk about a watercolor wash. So traditionally, when we speak about watercolor washes, what we're talking about are, is uh, evenly dispersing a color on the page. So in my journal, which is an 11 by 14 uh, space, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick a color. Uh, with a watercolor wash, you want to make sure that you have plenty of water. So make sure you're loading plenty of water into the brush and into the paint. And traditionally, your uh, goal is to create nice, even layers of that color. Many people who do watercolor washes are trying to create a seamless effect with the brush stroke, almost making the brush strokes not even be visible. If that's something that's important to you, then that's something that you can practice with your brushes as you work with some of these wash techniques. Watercolor wash, primary reason I'm using it is that when you open up one of these large books, <clears throat> the first thing that can be very uh, uh, troubling for people getting started in this practice is that the pages are just blank. It's just white paper, there's nothing there, and then they spend a lot of time sitting and trying to think about, what do I do to get this practice started? So a watercolor wash is just one basic way to get some color on the page. The fact that the page is no longer white is helpful. Uh, I find that usually if I turn to the page and there's already a color presented to me, the chances that I'm going to figure out something else to do in that space is a lot easier to manage. So I'm just going to keep painting until I've covered this entire space with this color. I'm using a phalo green out of this tray that I have. Any color will work fine. And as I said, the traditional notion of a, of a wash is to get an even layer of a color spread across the surface. So that's what I'm working on. Nice, even strokes with my brush, trying to almost think about, can I get this to be a seamless effect where the page just turns from white to the color that I'm intending. So watercolor washes, just one way that you can get a page started. And that's sort of the idea of all these videos are sort of like kickstarters for your visual journal practice. Just some ideas that'll help get some things going for you. So that's just a watercolor wash. Another thing I'd like to show you is similar to a watercolor wash, but I think of it more as creating a textured sort of application of the paint. So I'm gonna pick a different color purposely so that you can see a difference from the last one. Um, but unlike the watercolor wash, instead of doing nice, even strokes with the paint, I'm gonna purposely allow the brush to be a little bit more aggressive 
so that the brush strokes purposely do show up on the page. My goal, is, like the watercolor wash, is still to fill the space of my page with this intended color, but I'm not concerned with making sure that all of the application is that super smooth, uh, opaque, and seamless look. The brush strokes or the presence of the brush strokes and the bristles are what are going to uh, create the texture. So I can think about direction that I'm painting and be aggressive with plenty of water, plenty of color to create this page. And as I mentioned in the beginning, these are just ways to get the pages started. So you have a new blank book, you don't know what you wanna do, you don't know how to get started. This is just a way to quickly get some pages uh, started. They're no longer white, there's something going on. The idea is this can dry, I can come back to it later and think about putting something else um, on this page as well. And we'll come back to that in some of the uh, subsequent videos and we'll talk about some of those other things that might happen on those pages. So um, another thing that I'd like to talk to you about with these uh, watercolor paints is two concepts of changing the colors. So one of those concepts is mixing the colors. You have these trays on your watercolor, your, your watercolor palette, and in these trays you can mix colors together. So I'm gonna, I, I do have green in this palette, but maybe I want to make a green that I like. So I'm gonna start with some blue, add some yellow, and create the, the kind of green color that I want. And then so I can make plenty of this color and then think about, well, what do I wanna do to spread this color out? Do I wanna do a nice smooth wash application or do I like that more aggressive and textured look by allowing the brush strokes to th show through? So with the mixing, that color can be created right here on your palette. And the thing that I like about this is I can get colors that aren't already existing in this paint palette. And I can make that color and then use that color to paint a page. Another thing that can happen <clears throat> in this process too is the idea of color blending. So unlike mixing, which happens here on the tray, the blending is going to actually occur directly on the paper. So I might choose to start with the blue, and I'll put the blue on the paper first, and then I'll get into this yellow paint and add the yellow into the blue directly on the paper, and allow those two colors to blend together as the brush works with them. So just uh, a couple basic differences between those two. The mixing, I would say, occurs in the tray and then gets moved onto the paper surface, whereas the blending can occur directly on the paper. I can bring the two colors that I'm working with and apply them directly to that paper. So like I said, just a, a quick little video with some really basic techniques for working with the watercolor paint today. And it just gives you an idea of some ways to get some pages started in your visual journal, especially if you have a brand new book. This hopefully is also helpful if working in a visual journal is something that you're comfortable with and it's part of your studio practice already. Sometimes seeing some of these demonstrations is just a nice reminder of some things that maybe we just you just don't use that technique that often anymore. And it gives you a quick reminder of something that that you had forgotten about or just stopped using for some reason and it might reinvigorate uh, your, your application of, of that particular technique. And then I think probably overall my goal with, with these techniques is uh, I have this new book, big white blank pages, and if I can just get some watercolor paint on these pages either by using that watercolor wash, which is that nice even coat of a single color or using that textured approach where it might be taking a color and allowing the brush to be a little bit more uh, 
texturized with the way that the paint is, up, is applied. And then I also could think about creating some of my own colors, either by mixing those colors directly in the tray and then applying them to the surface, or by just taking the colors that I want to see uh, go together and blend them directly on the paper. Any of these techniques work great to get some pages started. Uh, my hope is that I'm going to make some more videos and I'm going to show you some other techniques with the idea that these other techniques can be built on top of uh, these beginning techniques of the wash, uh, the mixing and blending, and the, and the texture application to build some layered and rich pages and get your journal practice moving forward. So hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you soon uh, and have fun journaling. Um, we're all in this together, social distancing, so a, a journal is a great thing uh, to work in just to kind of keep your processes uh, going forward and to uh, stay creative in this time where you're stuck at home <laughs> like everybody else. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.